This episode is sponsored by Fidia. Hey guys, if you haven't already, make sure you follow the African Creator Podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and all other podcast platforms. Hello guys, welcome to a new episode of the African Creator. My name is Wandi, here with my ho- uh, co-host. I am. Hi, um, <laughs> Sorry, it's been a long morning. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, welcome tired, back. Yeah. Welcome back to another episode of the African Creator, where we basically um, like to speak uh, to African creators from different disciplines. And on today's episode, we have a very special guest. Very um, special. You know the name, definitely. <laughs> um, <laughs> some of you have been happy, and some of you have been angry at her, but I think all in all, <laughs> Um, she's offering an amazing service to the creative space. Ladies and gentlemen, live with Linda. Hi. <laughs> Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So I think, I think we should start from here. Um, how, when did you start um, this kind of um, job, right, of reviewing <laughs> the space? I, I'm, I'm trying to pick my words carefully. <laughs> What, when did you start this job of um, basically reviewing, um, you know, commercials and marketing, you know, um, and all of that? And is that how you started or did you start somewhere else and migrate into that space of basically reviewing? Okay. Yeah. Um, I think I started in 20, 2017. Okay. Yes. And I was working at an advertising agency then. Oh, fantastic. Yes. So... I was seeing a lot of stuff going on in the industry, you know, and I definitely had a lot to say. And, you know, sometimes the only way you can reach people, you can't go to everybody's house and start knocking yeah, on the door true. and say, I want to talk to you. So yeah. the only way you can reach them is on so social sure. media. And I have this love for advertising. And it was really, really shocking me then. It's even mm. shocking me to now say <laughs> <laughs> Because I just stumbled into yeah. advertising then. It was not like I, I planned to be in the field from the very beginning. I uh, people, so people who know what they want to do yeah. from the very beginning, I really applaud them. I, I think it's a nice thing. But for me, I stumbled into advertising. I fell in love with it. And I was like, you know what? I think I have a natural flair in this thing. And that's what everybody around me was able to you know, see as soon as I stepped in. It was like just from going higher and higher and higher in the organization and, and all that. So I just felt like, you know what, let me use this opportunity to express myself in the creative space, um, review ads. The main aim was to celebrate Ado. It was <laughs> <laughs> and then you don't review. <laughs> the main aim was to celebrate advertising yeah, yeah. that are great, you know, creative brands and all that. But you know, when you see some things and you just can't hold <laughs> yeah. it, hold it, yeah. Uh, you just have to let it out. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, that's how I stumbled it into it, and I'm glad to say that you know, from then till now, there's been a lot of improvements in the advertising space. Yeah. I'm not saying it's because of me or but it could have no, something to do you with me. Yeah, yeah, so I, I, I think, uh, and it's not like we don't have creative people, we don't have this, it's just that sometimes because the work is so much or because there is nobody calling anybody's attention to it, people yeah. just tend to like, let me just do it. Do it anyhow, yeah. But well, right now, I think it has reduced. A lot of people are taking time to review what they put out. So yeah, it's been amazing. I have fun doing it. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think I think you definitely play a role because um we're speaking just before we started rolling and I said that, you know, like we've encountered before but not through <laughs> not personally yeah. but through our work. And I and I definitely I mean thankfully they've been positive reviews. But um like I said, it's definitely a thought on like um production companies' minds, you know, especially mm. lately where it's like what is the public perception going to be? And, you know, one of the leaders of which is uh, alive with Linda. So um, I think definitely there's been a big impact on... Um, yeah, I, I feel fulfilled because industry. I get messages from people who wouldn't even say it publicly. I mean, top officials in different brands saying, Linda, thank you, you're putting us on our toes. You know, and which shows me that even though some people don't like it, there are people who like the challenge. Absolutely. It makes them sit up and do what is right. So it's, it's amazing. Mm. It's fulfilling for me. All right, guys, we interrupt this uh, podcast to tell you about the sponsors of this episode. And if you don't already know who it is, then have you been watching, have the, you been episodes? watching the episode? It's Fidia. Fidia. <laughs> Fidia is back. 
um, and basically FIDA is this monetization tool for African creators, specifically created for African creators. We know the problems we face with payments for our creative endeavors across the world and Africa is just not considered well. No longer is that the case. FIDIA is here with a lot of solutions and one of the new solutions they have that I'm very interested in is transfers. You know how I like money. Um, I believe that with FIDIA, um, it not only enables fans to support, but it enables creators to support other creators, right? So basically creators are fans of other creators as well and that way you can make a transfer of funds from one creator to another. Yeah, so it's just like if you were, you know, if you had a friend or if you had somebody who really loved what you were doing, like who me. is also a creator, you like him, like yes. one day, yeah. I can easily use my Fidia to send you, no, you will be the one sending me money, because no, I make more content. Yeah, but I, I need more money. So you need more, how do you need more money? <laughs> <laughs> one of the problems we've had so far with, create, with creating in Africa is you know, monetization. Most of the time, you can't always just wait on what the platform is going to give you, what YouTube is going to give you, or TikTok is going to give you. With this, with the transfers that Fidea has, that means if you have friends who are also creators, they can easily send you money. And it's very simple. All they just need to do is just uh, register with their username and they can easily send you money instantly. It, it's basically simple. You can send tips you know, to your favorite creators. Also, as creators, you can create payment links where, you know, people um, who have access to the platform with a simple username can make a tip or a donation to you as a creator. And I think also another cool part is you can add uh, the FIDIA username to your social media or share your payment links with your fans so that they can send you tips or donations. You can also send tips directly to your favorite creator from your FIDIA wallet. Yeah. And I Easy. think these are some of the things that makes FIDIA a great platform for creators across Africa. Easy peasy. Um, so, Tayo, I'll be sending you my payment link um, so that you can please I don't know, know if I have internet on my <laughs> phone. But when, once it comes in, I'll, I'll check right, it out. Fantastic. <laughs> Thank you so much. Make sure you guys check the link in the description for everything related to FIDIA. And thank you once again to FIDIA for sponsoring this episode. Thank you, FIDIA. So I think um, one of the other things that you mentioned that you were working at an advertising agency. Yeah. Did you ever give them a, or have you ever, since you've left, have you ever given them a negative review? <laughs> and who, <laughs> who called you <laughs> after uh... that? <laughs> Yeah, One day. <laughs> I'm curious. No names. You don't have to mention any names. It's just <laughs> Yes, I think I think I've given them a positive review and I've given them a negative okay. review as well. And you know the the the, the creative director then he got a bit pissed off, but of you know, the truth is the it's, truth, it's right? Is. Yes. Uh, and the is. good thing about it is I have a good relationship with yeah. them. The yeah. owner of the agency still calls me like almost every day and you know, he has a he has a good, um, how do I, he has a good, um, when you talk to him about me, he has good comments, yeah, you yeah. know, about me. And I have good comments about him too and his own impact in the industry. So, it's fine. I, I know you do mostly brands and companies, but have you ever done, like, a review on a creator? Mm, on a creator's work? No, I, I, I haven't really been concentrating on creators i've yeah. just been like on brands and brands. creators that work with, with brands, brands. Mm. yes oh, okay. yes but you know it's it's um it's shifting everything is shifting now if you look about if you yeah. think about it now yeah. yes. <laughs> that's it yes. right yes. now <laughs> but I, I feel like the creator industry also needs needs maybe some of what yeah they actually do, they actually do. Rock or constructive feedback, feedback. yes on their work yeah. right yeah. yeah well so, let's see how it goes yeah. so before we we got on um tyra and i were talking and okay. um, i was letting him know that um so i run a production company called Urbangiri. okay and um largely before uh, the core of our business um I mean, it still remains a little bit, but the core of our business was obviously shooting commercials and all of that. Um, over the last year or so, we've been slowly pivoting to creating more original concepts Content, and ideas. Yeah. And I think it's not, it's been, it's been half intentional, but half also because of the industry. Now, I don't know if it's a perception thing, 
But do you think advertising is in the same space it was just two years or three years ago pre-COVID? Um, because I honestly have this thesis that people are not advertising or or uh, shooting commercials as traditionally as they used to before. Am I wrong? No, you're not wrong. You know, it's, it's also one of the reasons why um, I also decided to move into the digital space because I foresaw it a long, it's, it's been a long time coming, right? This thing has been a long time coming in just that day. So it's slowing, it's slowly dying down. And really it's because of digital, whether we like it or not. Yeah. Gone are the days where people would want to spend a hundred million, 200 million doing an advert, promoting it and all that. You know, now if you just, if it went, during the time of traditional advertising, it's easier because you put it on TV and you keep replaying it and replaying it and replaying, people see it and all that. But right now, if you're not putting it, if you have not put it on social media, you haven't done anything. True. And the minute you put it on social media, it's still yeah, one, two, three days and you're done. You're done so are you going to start thinking of, okay, I have to create another commercial again. Do you understand what I'm saying? So right now, people are thinking digital. And when you think digital, sometimes you have to think, okay, how do I constantly provide content for these people? Mm -hmm. So you're not thinking of one content that will last me last for a six year. months or yeah. one year campaign. You're thinking of how do I constantly pull out little, little, content that would you know keep me in the face of the audience you understand mm -hmm. so that's one of the reasons why people think advertising is dying no so but advertising in the real sense is not dying it's mm -hmm. just that digital is more popular mm -hmm. right now mm -hmm. and it seems to be the most effective and efficient co even cost effective way of communicating yeah. with the audience so that's why it looks like that so there are still big companies that will do that big campaign or big adverts but you know majority of them are thinking no we need to go small and that's why they are going to content creators that's why they are going to skip makers mm -hmm. because they feel like okay this guy has my he has an audience so if i pay him it's more cost effective because as as he's producing at the same time he's feeding it to an audience yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Do you understand what i'm saying mm -hmm. so it's just a matter of mathematics you know yes, so yes. that's what's really happening in the advertising yeah. industry so advertisers or agencies will have to go deeper into doing um business consultations they have to yeah. go deeper into doing um insights generating insights and looking for creative ways for brands to stand out yeah. but when it comes to actual advertising right now uh, content creators like <laughs> Tayo, <laughs> you know, <laughs> the skip makers yeah they're the ones making the money they're the ones involved right now yeah. so that's why it looks like um things are slowing down yeah interesting i i, I think Adver advertising is so we can say advertising is not dying it's, it's evolving exactly it's evolving into a space where i mean we talk about this quite a lot yeah with creators. <laughs> I, I can bet that you know uh, a weekly brother shaggy does more views than the biggest tv show true well except big brother <laughs> yeah but i would say i can bet my money that brother shaggy would have more views at the end of a week and the biggest yeah. TV show on TV. Oh, and when, when you even look at it, you realize that it's also across all platforms. Across it all has platforms. a Facebook page, YouTube Instagram. page, Instagram, all those. When yeah. you combine everything you know? together. Yeah. You so know? It's, a, it's very interesting. It's interesting times that, but, that we're in. But there's something I also want to wanna, wanna, wanna add. I think that, you know, back then when they were spending this amount of money doing all this, mm -hmm. we spent like 100 million, 200 million on an advert, commercial advert. These days, when they want to spend money on creators, it's like it's <laughs> like it's, it's the it's the drops of water. Is it? That's why I was waiting. I'll start, 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 start talking yeah, my own. Yeah, let's go. Let's go. <laughs> Should I address that? Should yeah. I address so that? Why like that? Yeah. I'll tell you why. Okay. Because the the the, con the concept of the content they are different. Mm. Do you understand what I'm okay, saying? I'm yes. If you, as Tayo, mm -hmm. if you have a project that would cost twenty million, and mm -hmm. you tell it to the client, the clients would pay. But when they are looking at you. I think that's one of the reasons why we're going to be discussing what we're discussing, which is branding yeah. for creators. Yeah. When they look at you, they would want to size you up based on what content you're putting out right now. Hmm. Because mm -hmm. when they are coming to you, Tyre, they are coming to you to do the content you've been doing for yourself yeah. for them. Yeah. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So, except you have, or except they have a grand idea of this is how I want to use style. Yeah. Then they can say, okay, if this is how I want to use Tyre, it's going to cost X amount of money. Okay, mm -hmm. let's put that money down. Okay. So it's different from say, okay, Tyre, 
give me a spot on your show. Mm -hmm. You have your rate card. That's what they're going to work with. Yeah. So when they're doing adverts, for example, they, they, they are taking everything into consideration. Mm -hmm. They might have to create a whole village, for example, to do an advert. Oh, true. Do you understand? Because yeah. they want just their colors to be there. To be there, yeah. Do you understand what I'm saying? They want to bring out all their brand elements. So they may have to create a whole lot of things to make that happen. But when they're dealing with creators, they're not worried about all of that. Yeah. They're just worried about sending the message across. So if they come and tell you now, okay, no, you have to use this color, you have to use this building, mm. then you will build them. Yeah, yeah, true. But then again, isn't shouldn't the result matter more than the the input? Of so course. if this creator is going to get you more eyeballs, so shouldn't it matter more mm -hmm. the eyeballs, the results, right? Because what if this creator is able to get you more eyeballs than that project that needs you to build a village and this thing? If that is going to get you, let's say, 1.5 million eyeballs, 1.5 million views, and Tyo is able to get you 2 million, now nobody's asking for the this hundred million, but surely you should be able to give him at least thirty. Okay, um, you don't sometimes, and the reasons why brands do adverts or do what they do, they have their reasons. Some people sometimes you might think it's eyeballs, but sometimes it's not eyeballs they're looking for. There are mm. some people who are not looking for eyeballs. Okay. So they have their different reasons for doing their adverts. Some might just be doing it for prestige, prestige. stage. Mm. Some might just be doing it to build brands. Some might just be doing it to do perception some might just be doing it for image mm. so there are different mm. reasons reasons why yes so if it's for eyeballs yes mm. it's it's justifiable yeah. but then again the creator will have to have enough value for them to that mm. and it all comes to branding yeah it comes down to branding you understand what i'm saying if for example a brand says i want to identify with this person right if the person is more expensive than the other people out there if they are serious about this person because this person aligns with their brand and the message they want to pass across they will They'll pay the money hmm. they will pay interesting yes i think that's a very i didn't think about it from that so yes um i think we've had a so i would say um the most prestigious um advertising slots is probably the super bowl yeah right i would compare it's, it's, a, it's a very funny comparison. You want to go to Big Brother? Yes. <laughs> Big Brother is our Super Bowl. Let's be honest. No, but it's true. It's, it's true, the it's biggest true. amount of true. eyeballs Ad, in Nigeria. True. Yeah, yeah, true. Yeah. true. That's true. So, I do understand that. And I noticed the trend, right? So, personally, I have shot a couple commercials for, um, like, the Big Brother slot, basically. And I can compare... The first one that I shot <laughs> to the last one that I shot. And the last one that I shot was one quarter the budget. One qu so I think. Um, oh, yeah. I'm actually shooting one, you for, get one for a big brother right? for this next exactly. big brother. Exactly. So currently the now. first one was like, oh, we're going to big brother. We need to go big. Bam, 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 bam. But if you watch more recent versions of big brother, you'd notice that some people literally just, some people put like vlog type content <laughs> yeah. on the slots, right? Yeah. And you just, so it, it, it boasts for the argument of some people do it for prestige and do it for like, okay, yes, oh, this is the big company to know are standing in the industry. And some people just do it for like, oh, more, let's just get these eyeballs. That's why they don't care the amount of quality they put. Because if I'm paying for a big brother advertising slot, I wouldn't want to put. I'm, I I I've seen some of those ads and I could swear that they shot it with the phone. <laughs> True. You know. True. So it's it's True. um it's very interesting that you say that the, the the motivation. You know, sometimes we think about it as just eyeballs, eyeballs, eyeballs. Oh but no. Yeah. It's, um, it, I, it's just like even on the show itself, you could see the difference. The the you can tell the kind of brands or the kind of image these brands have from their appearance yeah. on the show. Yeah. You understand? There are a lot of them sponsoring the show, but you see that, example, like Pepsi will stand out. Mm. They will not do anything that is below mm. a, certain a certain standard. standard. Yeah, but you true. see some others, they'll be using buckets to play their games. I saw that. I you know? Yeah. <laughs> it has to do with the personality mm, of the of brand. The I, like, for me, I wouldn't want to be seen that way, but yeah. some people don't mind, provided mm. the money is coming. coming. And it also depends on what the vision is of the brand you know so not it's not everybody on big brother ninja that has 
that vision. It's yeah. not everybody that wants to. Some of them are just doing it for doing sake. Some mm. are strategic in how they go about it. Like I would tell you that Pepsi and the others they are very strategic. They know what they're doing. Yeah. But some, they just want to get the eyeball. That, For example, there are some brands that are on BB Ninja that are not supposed to be on BB Ninja. You have only one outlet in Lagos. You're on BB Ninja. You're trying to reach everybody in Africa. In Africa. It doesn't make any sense. Hmm. You know? So, <laughs> so it depends on... Yeah. They have their reasons. So yeah. many reasons. And, you know... Well, <laughs> do you feel, do you feel ads? You know, back then we used to have this. There are ads that if they play now, like uh, there was a time I saw this all these old, old ads from like Peak, um, mm. um, this Papillo, all those old yes. ads. Yes, do you feel yeah. the creativity with ads hmm. has increased as time has passed, or do you feel they have reduced? in the Nigerian or even in the African space because I know mm. there are so many memorable ads that if you think about it first of all you can think about many there's probably the peak there's probably the there are plenty there's probably the da Dangote Super Sack yes, one yes. and they, 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 they resonate with you even when you think yeah. about it in chat do you yeah. feel like I don't really feel me personally I don't feel like many of the recent ads we've had stand out. they stand out like in 2-3-4 right. years I don't think we we'll remember anything about them but we'll remember Papillo well, well, well. <laughs> um, you know, on, 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 on face value, I would want to agree with you, but okay. you have to understand something. I think we still have creative people. I think we can still do standard ads. But you have to understand the reason why some of those ads stood out in the first place. Okay. The first reason is that, you know, these ads you're calling, I'm sure they were over a 10 years period. It's not like every or one of them was shot in... Mm. in 2010 yeah, or 1990, yeah. for example. Yeah. One could have been shot in 1990, the other one 1997. You know, there's mm. space in between mm. them. Yeah, but we've not come out with well, anything like that. There was an era. Yeah. 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 Hold on. Exactly. And then that time, there is this thing about the, the way they promote stuff. Mm. You might have something nice right now. Mm -hmm. Very, very nice. But it might not be as memorable as Papillo because not as much people got to see it. Actually. And we're yeah. all watching the same channels. Right? Do you understand what I'm oh, saying? Yeah, there was nothing else to watch. Do you yeah. understand? And the we're way they promote mm. those things, yeah, 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 even true, a true. stupid ad would look yes. good. Good, true. Very true. Do you understand? True. But I would agree with you. There are some that are just amazing that you yeah. that are creative. What would you say is one of your best ads from Nigeria? Yeah, from Nigeria. All time. Oh my god, I have to think about it. I've not really thought about okay, it. Okay, okay, maybe, maybe one of the best. It doesn't have to be the best. Papillo is actually one of the best. Mm -hmm. And one, why, the reason why it's one of the best for me is because they, they try to ev evoke emotion. I like emotional ads. Yeah. They try to connect with people and they use the true life story of Kano Wankwo, mm -hmm. a soccer player. Mm -hmm. You can't beat that. And be it today, be it tomorrow, be it forever. You see, stories would always stand out. Emotional right. stories will always, stand out, especially when they are real, when they have a connection with the person. Nowadays, most times, okay, I agree with you, Ty. <laughs> <laughs> most I'm times, convince yourself. <laughs> when they want to use these actors and actresses and yeah. these celebrities, they don't they don't tie it to the mm. person. You know, they just yeah. choose for choosing sake. But back then, they will find a Something. reason. Do you understand to tie it and then they'll use it to do an, um, an ad that is very very you know good so now you you yeah i have a segue <laughs> to the next question you said they choose people for choosing sake mm. some not all yeah some, some i believe like a lot i believe like if it was rated on a scale of one to hundred i feel like 80 percent they choose just for choosing sake and the reason <laughs> i say this is because i have a problem with like el many brands in nigeria yeah especially in the travel space because that's where I, i'm at <laughs> but i have this thing and I, i've seen it replicated across a lot of spaces yes. you know whenever people want to pick let me let's even go to the beauty beauty space just like okay. what happened currently with the fenty lunch i'm sure you probably heard about that it was everywhere like you know pr companies and i'm not blaming rihanna or whatever for that but pr companies whenever they want to choose somebody they rather go with people who have more numbers even if those numbers are not like the niche audience that they're trying to target mm. than going with the niche people i believe that if you are in the beauty space it makes sense for you to go with a niche um instagrammer who has like 50k yeah than going with like a 500k beauty. somebody who's like an actor general yeah general but i feel like most times in nigeria it's the numbers people focus on they don't focus on the conversion and then eventually they come back and say oh our campaign didn't do well do you feel it's do you do you notice that too 
<laughs> yes, I, I notice it, but like I said, there are a number of reasons why some of these things happen. And I'll give you an example. Okay. I'm not supposed to say some things, but Tayo is going to make me. <laughs> <laughs> I'll try. I'll try not to expose too much. But you see, um, yes, I agree with you. Okay. Numbers mean a lot to Nigerians yeah. because most of the time they are thinking about the bottom line. Okay. I want to do this thing once and get the most out of it. Yeah. So that's why they consider numbers more than every other thing most yeah. of the time so and it's wrong it's not like it's right it's wrong yeah. because you could do micro influencers and do it effectively yeah. and get better results if you know what you're doing yeah. right so yes there is this thing with numbers but um for the example you made which is um, fenty it was also like a big issue on my page right mm. and um it was I got inside scoop that <laughs> okay. you know because you mentioned the PR agency it might not actually be the PR agency's fault mm. oh, okay. when you're dealing with a global brand there yeah. are just certain standards yeah. that you have to attain hmm. do you understand yeah. so if you're a Nigerian person and you, <laughs> they don't act like that abroad mm. hmm. do you get what I'm saying yeah. so if you have said something online that is they will not go, they're not going to call you yeah because they don't want to they don't want you to be do you understand what that with the brand. Mm. And, yeah your your yeah. beauty blogger for example and you want fenty to fenty to invite you and you already have your own skincare line yeah they're not going to call you hmm. you know we in nigeria we don't take these things seriously uh, serious, yeah, yeah. but if you if you if you want to grow as a content creator you have to brand yourself and you have to take note of some of these things some of us don't have email etiquette hmm. they're gonna write you out immediately yeah. these are serious brands hmm. so it's not really for them for those ones it's not really about the numbers because i know that um fenty has used the model from nigeria before Right, she didn't have followers. I think mm. I, I can't remember who the lady was. Mm. They have, so the, the, their screening process is very, very tight. Tight, okay. Very, very tight. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Now, um, this same Fenty thing they're talking about. I I don't know if you know, but there were two. There were two. Um, what's that thing called again? Oh, sessions that they did. Oh, Fenty okay. did theirs. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. And they invited just twenty people. Mm from the whole beauty space. Hmm. The other one that people were talking about was the one was that was done one. by people in Nigeria. Hmm. Do you understand what I'm saying? So there's a, there's a tight screening process, even down to, even down to, for example, let me say a random example, the DJ that will play at an event, they will screen you. Oh, really? Okay. If you have a bad reputation, they'll tell you, no, have you sorted this issue out? Mm. Have you done this? Have you done? They will do all of that. So mm. if you are expecting to work with a serious brand, and I, and I know there are some brands in Nigeria that are like that too, you think it doesn't matter for you to insult people online? You think it doesn't matter? <laughs> this is for all the Twitter, all the t Twitter people. You understand? You think it doesn't matter for you to say your mind? And, uh, what, what, what you say your mind, uh, I'm not saying don't say your mind, yeah. right? Do that, but you, when you're it doing that, you have, to be, you have to be conscious of the fact that I am exposing my brand, I'm exposing my ideals, and only brands that are aligned with my ideals will work oh, with me. With me yeah. hmm. That's it. So that's what, you know, we keep saying branding, branding, that's what it's all about. So if you want to, it's not like if, if you are insulting people online, that's also a brand. Yeah, yeah. true. Because yeah. some people have gotten popular yeah. with that. Yeah, that's also a brand because once you want to be that, you just have to accept it. That, okay, this is my brand. And so based on this, these are the kind of people I'm going to work, work with. with. So you cannot do that and expect to be working with the likes of Fenty. Fenty. Yeah, hmm. yeah. So you have to you have to define mm, yourself so. and start working. <laughs> you, do you understand what I'm saying? Mm, yes. Yeah. So yes, like back to your question, numbers. Yes, is important, but these other thing, the things things they also, they also matter. matter. Yes, a lot. Mm. So would you say for creators to actually not be sidelined, they should would they say work more on their brand or think about all these other things that they do? Because I I think what, what like what you said now was very like explanatory. I feel like a lot of people also don't think about that too. Mm. You know, we, just, we just feel like I have numbers, so I have, I'm a brand. Yeah, yeah, but you don't think yeah. about all the, like what you said, email etiquette. I've, I know people can be very somehow when it comes to writing yeah. emails. <laughs> yeah. 
Hmm, that's very interesting. Yeah. I, I think I, 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 so I came, <laughs> I remember working on the project in the past, and it's so funny because um, when you were talking, it just it struck a chord with me, right? Yeah. I, I remember working with someone in the past, and um, we, we, it was a music video for a client that was, you know, going to give us, he had basically promised us like a series of gigs after, and this was the trial. Okay. And I think it was post COVID. And um, we finished the project. It was it went smoothly on the day. Uh-huh. Post production <laughs> was a nightmare. Um, mm. Basically, we, he liked the first cuts to make a few adjustments here and there. You know, the person would just switch off his phone, like not you know, and just give me one word replies when I get across to him and everything. So I remember having to deliver the project like two days late. Okay. And meanwhile, it wasn't my fault, but I don't believe in that. Mm. Like you hired me, you didn't hire the editor. Yeah. So I I always picked the call of the client. Yeah. No matter how I was like, I'm so sorry, man. I'm like, I have to pick the call. And I remember delivering the project to him and he was just like, Yeah, yeah, no problem, no problem. And then he didn't pick my calls after wow. that. Um he put out the video. I'm glad he did. And I'm glad the video got the reviews it got, but he went with someone else. And I could perfectly understand that because then um, things like um, professionalism matter. Mm-hmm. You know, no matter how skilled you are, this person I'm talking about is extremely skilled. But just the little, the XP, the PTSD of, oh, I could give you a project and you wouldn't pick my call. I've done things in the past where I have to work on projects. Um, that have like a costly timeline and I would hire, like I'll get a hotel room mm. and I'll be like, we're staying here and we're finishing this thing. <laughs> I'm not letting my eyes, I'm not letting you out of my sight because it, 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 it's very um, tricky and I, I think we've noticed it a lot with, um, just nowadays I think there's, especially with the younger creators, mm. they, they are skilled but they sometimes don't understand the urgency you mean and, they are not professionals of professionalism. Right, just I think that's it. Just say they are not professionals. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm picking my words. Before they drag me on Twitter. I mean, please don't drag me. Unless they kill me. I don't have a problem with it. Yeah, exactly. So, a lot of them are not professional. And I've yeah. seen the most talented people. Like, mm. just things that they would do. And I'm like, oh my God, how did this person do this? You know, and... But I still wouldn't hire you because you know i have a reputation to protect so i completely understand yeah where you're coming from very important very important very very important so <laughs> another thing i wanted to bring up right it was trending in the news it's public information okay the um and i think i saw you, you touched on it on your page okay um the that? issue with um um sabinus, sabinus. <laughs> yes and um you know uh, basically the something huge thing and the what what how do we make sense of all of that um now, obviously, his um, his lawyer. Um, I shouldn't have done that. Sorry, his <laughs> lawyer. <laughs> his lawyer um, obviously said that the the, the something huge was trademarked. Uh-huh. Um, obviously, uh, we're not sure, but obviously, if he says that, we'll, we'll have to believe him. But um, what of the other one of the illustration? Like, is that do, do they have an argument for like image rights or like how how do we how do we make sense of all of this? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so not a lawyer. This is military truth. I, I, I think the question the question maybe another way to place the question mm. is how do creators are we at a stage where creators can or how do creators protect the their IP. IP. Mm. Maybe that's even the question. I think that's a bigger question because I feel like the IP play is also a very big play. It's very important. It's very important. But yeah. I feel like, me, like, I don't know if we're at that stage yet or many people don't have things where it's like the IP or they don't feel like it's important enough to protect yeah. it. How do we, how do creators actually... Yeah, I think it's important for every creator to start learning, you know, about IP rights. Mm like really learning about it and getting a lawyer to advise them on how to protect their intellectual um, property. Um, in the case of uh, Sabinus, 
Um, some people might think, ah, he went overboard. Yeah. You know, something huge. Yeah. Uh, he went over. But you know the funniest thing? Sometimes you can't. You just have to understand the pain. It would be. Yeah. I would be angry. You know that yeah. these creators go through. Yeah. You know, especially for him, especially this of case. Of course. I, I'm sure that pick me milk. They melt. They meant no harm. Yeah. Do you understand? Because uh, there are a lot of slangs that have blown like yeah. that. Now yeah. see Davido's slang. Who yeah. they breathe? Yeah. 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 You know, yeah. they yeah. and they, everybody keeps using, using it. it. Yeah. No, so uh, some people were angry that okay. So what's wrong with Sabinus? Yeah. And then there's, I think there was somebody on my page who also said that um, Sabinus was using her father's voice oh, or something. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's, yeah, they, there's one guy that used to say something oh. back there, all those kids or Ski, something. You know, they, yeah. they use each other's use each other stuff. stuff. Yeah, you yeah, get what yeah, I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, so the person yeah. was saying, so why would Sabinus? So I can understand for everybody's, everybody's perspective. perspective yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because the copywriters would be like, come on, we're just trying to leverage slangs. Slang, we're trying yeah. to leverage pop culture yeah. to do our creatives. Yeah. It's different from saying, I want to use Sabinus or Sabinus voice and yeah. stuff. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. 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 So, I think Sabinus has a point. Even the other guys too, they have a point. Yeah. Everybody has a point. point. But the most important <laughs> thing is, really, IP issue is a big deal. It's you should you should feel for the creators, especially yeah. for Sabinus, for example. Look at this situation. The way I say it is, they did a campaign. They used the slang for that campaign, and um, something huge is coming. Mm -hmm. And guess what? The campaign was actually huge, yeah. and they used a lot of influencers. Yeah. And Sabinus and was not the one oh, of those influencers. Yeah, 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 yeah. He would be yeah. pissed. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Sure. You understand? Yeah, I he will be pissed. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so and I, I I think yeah, he should have tried reaching them. And and I'm thinking maybe he tried he and he did, did not he you know get a response, response and yeah. all. So I, I, I think everybody should just be at least a little bit human in, in, in times like this, trying to understand where the guy yeah. is coming yeah. from. You know, it's not easy oh, being a content <laughs> creator. <laughs> I know. It's not easy. <laughs> I know. Yeah. So, so I mean I think it's, it's very so somebody had an argument with me uh, in, in in the dms and was basically stating that oh i say something who is it going to sue me i said it's different you're like you're an individual mm. right i think when it comes to corporate entities especially some something as big as that company yeah there's a added responsibility you understand like you know that you this is this was a campaign thing. you're using it to directly make money money yeah you know so i think that's also something we should think of going yeah. forward in the future that yeah. a lot of these companies and the brand managers need to understand that there's an added responsibility of of care they really when, need to you know, they really need to people, understand you know, that because i i see comments like oh nobody's gonna give him job again oh blah, blah, blah. you know it's it's all. it's not nice it's not nice. He has a claim to his stuff. He has a claim to his stuff. That's not the best way to go about it. Absolutely. If we keep going about it like that, content creators will not eat. Yes, they will just yeah. be making stuff for other people, people to use. Yeah. So everybody should just be human. Like, at least try and be yeah. understanding. I, I, Cardi B, for example, yeah. you know she trademarked a curve. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She did. Yeah. Brands can't use yeah. it. Yeah. True. So that's, that's true. how it is. I think I think um, I, I, the something which I, I, I didn't I was willing to let that go. It's the image one. Yeah, is that, that image one you got? How can you say that about him? Like you drew him uh -huh. on your mind. <laughs> who, who else is it? Like, I mean, because you make the shirt red. Like, also, I know that that so. Yeah. I think uh, and this segues into the next question of, but I feel like we've just been talking creators, creators, creators. What is the responsibility of brand managers? Because in our conversations, we've had a lot of conversations over the season about um, the responsibility of brand managers, number one. And number two, um, out of touch brand managers. Um, I feel like a lot of the c why companies seem or come off across as they are behind or out of touch is because of those people in those, in those positions, sensitive yeah. positions that are not able to read the trends or know you know who the relevant people popping are or who to connect to or have a clear vision so what do you think the responsibility of brand managers are and i think is there a direct correlation between a successful brand image and its and the custodian of its uh, of course there is a direct correlation yeah. yes there is because it, a, a brand manager is in charge of the, everything that has to do with the brand the image the perception you know even the internal workings of the brand yeah it's it lies it's the responsibility of the of the brand manager and um hmm, sometimes it's not the fault of the brand managers okay, okay. okay. <laughs> 
<laughs> yes, because I've been in this the industry long yeah. enough to know, and I've worked in both the client and the agency side. And I can tell you for a fact that sometimes when the company is set in its ways, if you like, mm. go and bring anybody, anybody, even from US, it's not going to make any yeah. difference. Mm. You have to stand from the ground up. Mm. I have to all start from the up down. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a cultural, yeah. Do you understand what I'm saying? So it, it it largely depends on the culture of the company itself. You do you understand? Yeah, it yeah. depends on the culture of the company itself. Yeah. I've been to a place where I wanted to do change. Change did not allow me to change. <laughs> Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. And that's one of the reasons why I decided to do what I'm doing. Yeah. Because yeah. it's opening... People, some people think, some agencies think that, oh, this is an attack on them, or yeah. it's really just to open everybody's eyes, eyes to everybody's to every, responsibilities. Yeah. Do you understand? That's what it is. Because you might want to do something, they will tell you, what, what are you saying? I've been in this business for the past 25 years. You cannot tell me this is how it is. Do you understand what I'm saying? I think, I think another thing I also like about what you also do is, you also post... Like, you also share ads that are done outside the country. Mm-hmm, just mm-hmm. to bring people's mind out, as a reference. Like, okay, this is what... Like, what it can be what done, possible, yeah. you know? It can be done. It's just our mindset mm-hmm. over here. And I thank God because I think it's beginning to change, mm-hmm. especially with the new crops of uh, companies coming up right yeah, now. It's yeah. beginning to change. Mm-hmm. And I think, well, we're moving to that era where the brand managers will be allowed to be mm-hmm. the brand managers. So, yes... I won't, I won't say you're totally wrong because there are some brand managers that don't know their job. Yeah. Yeah. There are some that are just so caught up on, oh, I want to make extra cash, egunje, yeah. and they will give stuff yeah. to their friends. friends they will yeah. be blind to certain things just because of their own personal interests. So there are people yeah, like that. Are there, are also yeah. others, <laughs> there are also others that are there to do the few. It's not, there are not many. There are few that are there to do the job, but they're yeah. not allowed to do the job yeah. because of the culture of the company. So I think right now, every, you know, and that's why sometimes it's good to call out brands mm. so that everybody in charge will know that, okay, there's a problem. And yeah. then they can begin to say, okay, where, where did this the problem, problem emanating right. from? Yeah. And then try to solve it. So yes. My dear, trust me, there's no one solution for everything. There isn't. Yeah. True. That's there is true. no one solution. It, it has to be a collective decision. Like, okay, this is what we want to do as a brand. And if you do that, you will put the right people in place. And then the right people will have the chance to do what they're supposed to do because the culture of the place will, or the environment will allow them to do what they're to supposed, do supposed to, do. to do. Fantastic. Yep. Um, I think I have one last question. Okay. Um, um, you're you're obviously um, someone known for you know giving constructive criticism and reviewing and celebrating brands and ads and all of that. Um, but you yourself are a brand as well. Um, how is that balance? You know? <laughs> <laughs> how is that balance? Because I'm talking in reference to just you know existing as a brand, monetization versus constructive criticism, like. How do you balance it? It's, it must be <laughs> it must be difficult. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> mm. The million dollar question. <laughs> yeah. Well, for me, um, I've always um, seen myself to be somebody that is very objective, or people around me say that I'm yeah. very, very objective. Like, even if you annoy me, that will not stop me from saying what you did is is good or is bad hmm. but a lot of people have a hard time believing that because they wouldn't do that hmm. Hmm. so first of all i tell people don't judge me based on your own Standard. way of doing yeah. things yeah. yeah you know everybody is different different yeah but i hear you and i hear a lot of other people because i know that it was also like um some sort of bone of contention when i went for an event as well they asked me so linda ah uh, so how do you review these ads i have a team I put together a review the ads. Mm. And I am also, because definitely monetization is also important. Yeah. yeah. Do you understand yeah. what I'm yeah. saying? So what I'm doing is trying to, um, ah, Jesus, you guys want to expose me. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to go into details. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right, so what I'm trying to do is find a way of, uh, should I? <laughs> Find a way of making sure. Every man in the suit behind the camera is just winking aggressively. <laughs> so I have to find a way of making sure that um, the reviews stay as that. So if you if you have noticed, 
recently i've stopped saying okay these are my views mm. hmm. from when i started i was i was i was reviewing based on my own, yeah. Yeah. professional you know standards and what i know and all that if you watch very closely i've it's kind of like evolved, evolved into okay these are our views or these okay. are the audience's views. views. Do you understand Absolutely. what I'm yeah. saying? Absolutely. Yeah, so that it will not look like I'm trying to witch hunt you. Mm. Yeah. So sometimes, I, there was a time somebody sent me an ad and said, Linda, can you please um, help? That was before I started the whole monetization mm. thing, though. Mm. Um, can you please like um, help us with this? I said, this ad is not good enough. Mm. It's not nice. And he was so angry. Mm. Because it's from an agency, yeah. and they have like you know they all sat down, oh, done the strategy, yeah. and they've repaired themselves yeah. and everything. Yeah. And I'm saying, I'm telling you, you will understand this ad. People out there will not understand oh, it. Right. I yes. can't post it. It's not creative enough. And he said, okay, no problem. And he was upset. And then on the second thought, I was like, I'm going to post this ad, and I'm going to post it in such a way that I will not give any opinion. Any I'm going to be. Yeah, open. Yeah, just just leave it open yeah. and I did and they blasted that ad <laughs> <laughs> and I was so happy because sometimes you think it's me it's not me people are seeing it yeah. they think Nigerians are not educated yeah. or they are not woke yeah. they are they know these things they know when you're trying too hard they know when you're trying to play they're trying when you're trying to cut corners you need to communicate effectively and you can't do that unless you test your communication yeah. but some of them they don't test they just hate each other in the office yay yeah. <laughs> you know this is bad because they understand it yeah. Do you understand yeah. it? You put it out there, people don't understand because they don't they were not there when you guys were doing the strategy. They don't have the context. You have the context, they don't. You know, so I was so very happy that they that they, they really blasted it very well. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So yeah, that's it. So right now I'm 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 evolving and I'm I'm also doing a lot of things, you know, under the radar to see if I can get, you know. I wouldn't say but yeah. but just try to solidify the whole review as coming from the audience yeah. but I, I think just to conclude yeah, yeah okay. so um yeah so that's what um live with linda is all about so going forward is going to be okay this is a review platform hmm. and the review is for you to get insights about your ads your brands hmm. all right and then there's also the other element of i like to call it advertainment hmm. where you people get entertained or people can connect with your brand through your adverts. Uh, adverts. So celebrating creativity, creative adverts. Hmm. That's what it is right hmm. now for us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. cool. <laughs> um, so I think I actually have two questions. When you started reviewing, like when you started reviewing the ads and the brands, how do you, how were you able to deal with like, you know, criticism? Well, I love criticisms. Okay. <laughs> I do. Like I usually say that if you think I did something wrong, come up to my face yeah. and oh. tell me. Mm -hmm. I like it. Like because I would I might be a bit oh, but I would sit down and think about like okay, maybe there's maybe you have some maybe there's something here that you're saying. I I try to see from everybody's, you know, point of view yeah. and then make my decision. That's how I am. I like criticism because you never can tell you might think something is actually very nice. Somebody else might be seeing it from a totally different, different angle. angle. And yeah. really that's one of the things that even this live with Linda page has, has taught me. You can't see all the angles. Yeah. That sometimes I review ads and I put it out there and somebody will come from another angle. Linda, you didn't see this thing. Hmm. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, so and attention to detail is very, very um, important. So, what was your question again? I did the criticism. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I, I didn't mind. I didn't mind at all when people criticized me. I didn't mind what... And fortunately, I thank God for the way he made me. Yeah. I really don't yeah. care. I know that's not <laughs> what you wanted to use. <laughs> yes, uh, yes. I really don't care yeah. what you think yeah. <laughs> you know i yeah. i am just here to do my job and yeah. do it well and if you think there is a way i could have done it better come to me say oh linda do. and i will listen that's that's how it is you know okay. if only nigerians can just be <laughs> that simple okay. so, so my final question is how do you what's your advice to you know a lot of creators out there I, I'll, I'll come from the creator side more because mm. I, I think yeah. there is Africa creator. So <laughs> <laughs> what's your advice for them to be able to, you know, leverage their brand 
to because like what you what you mentioned when we were talking about the whole you know the whole fantasy uh. thing and how creators need to take their business serious and their brand serious what's your advice to a lot of creators who want to kind of like leverage their brand to be more you know like bigger to be bigger so that they can work with like international companies yeah, and biggest and companies. Let me just add on to that. Like it's like 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 we've said, it's the evolution of advertising. Um, a lot of these brands cannot survive without creators. Mm-hmm. But in in the same vein, a lot of these creators too um, can't survive without these these brands because um, we haven't found a model. You know, it's not it's not Netflix that yeah. people yeah. Are subscribe to. Yeah. yeah, you know, it's like you, you need to a huge degree. A lot of creators need, you know, advertising and yeah. um, these advertisers to work with them. So how how can we make that work? Because that's that's pretty much one of the, the big aims of this podcast. <laughs> yeah, you know, to help bridge that gap. Well, I I, I think the you, the first things first things first, you have to brand yourself. Yeah. For me, branding is defining your image and then projecting or promoting that image to the general public. That's what it is. A lot mm. of creators don't brand. They just start. Mm. It's good to start, but when you start and you now understand what your strengths are, it's time to start consciously branding. Branding is like planning. You know what they say about planning? Failing to plan is planning to fail. That's what branding is. Failing to brand is branding (laughs) to fail. (laughs) Some people might be lucky and they just, you know, they don't brand and then they still, you know, blow up. But at the end of the day, if you don't brand, you're branding. Whether you brand or not, you're branding. So Hmm. it's best for you to make conscious efforts to brand properly. Because the minute you start your content, you are already branding. Mm. You're already telling people about yourself. You're already telling people about what you do. You're already telling people about your content. You're doing it, whether you make a conscious effort or not. But it is important for you to have conscious effort. Because when you define your brand, you are able to question yourself to say, okay, what value am I really bringing? Right? It's not like... There may be thousands of other people doing what you do. What makes you different? If you have branding yourself, every day you will challenge yourself to be unique. Yeah, yeah. Every day you'll be like, no, what can I do? And that's one of the things that also push people to be innovative, to evolve, and to stay in content creation for years without people getting bored of you mm. because you are evolving. So some people think evolving means doing plenty of things. No, that's not what it is. You have to make conscious, you have to have, you have to sit down and discuss it and strategize every single time to see how you can define yourself and push that image out. So that people out there, brands out there will be like, okay, there are three travel bloggers, for example, Mm -hmm. I think I want to go to, uh, go with Tayo. They will have a reason for coming to you because you have put values, brands, aspirations out there that aligns with what they do, that aligns with their brand. And sometimes your unique Thing might just be words hmm. you know because i have people saying ah what can i do that is you? sometimes it's just <laughs> it's just wor- it's perception perception hmm. sometimes it's perception yeah. and then when you put out that perception you start building on it and then start seeing how you can be adding value to it gradually yeah. gradually gradually just define it first do you understand what i'm yeah. saying the, all the telecommunication companies are the same but everywhere you go yeah. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Big grandmasters of data. Mm. You know? And then when you have that, when you are defined, then people just tend to take you as more professional. Mm. People just tend to take you as more professional. More people, more brands will want to work with you just because they feel like, okay, this person is put together. And the good thing about branding is that both big and small and every brand will want to work with you. you, you you'll be the one to choose to choose. say, you know what, I don't think I want to work with this, I want to work with this. But when you don't brand, you only see some sort, some sort of brands, brands coming, to, coming you. to you. The big brands will only come to you when you have made a lot of followers. Yeah. And guess what? Content creators should not be aspiring more for followers. They should be aspiring to give value. value. If I have 50,000 followers or I have 10,000 followers, will you get what you're looking for if you come to me? Would you get the insights you're looking for? Mm. 
Would you get the people to buy? Would you get people to start talking? Those ten thousand people to start talking about, about your, brand your brand when you come to me. That's more important because there are a lot of content creators now. There yeah. are a lot of celebrities that are popular for just the sake of being popular, and you can't even compete because some of them have they're from money. <laughs> True. <laughs> they dress more than you. They do everything more than you. You can't compete. The only way you can compete is to brand yourself. You know, that's the cheapest. That's, let me not call it cheap. Let me say the most cost-effective <laughs> cost way, way. To, of ensuring that, okay, I'm in the game and I'm attracting the right kinds of people. Establish your, and that's the only way you can also establish authority. You need to be an authority in your field as a content creator. Once you're an authority, you can do anything. Hmm. Drops my. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so Thank much. You. This, this has you're been an welcome. amazing, yeah. amazing episode. Um, Thank you. We've been looking forward. I mean, since the first season, we've been looking forward to speaking to somebody on the brand side, and uh, it's it's amazing that you know we spoke to you because I think you did justice to both yeah, sides. She finished, she finished, thank she you. Finished work. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you so much. Um, thank you guys for watching another episode of the African Creator. Um, remember to like, comment, share, subscribe. Mm, you, didn't say, you didn't say check the description for okay. Yes, like a link. <laughs> <laughs> Please check the description for. Uh, make sure you follow uh, Live with Linda on Instagram. Yes, do you have do. any other channels that you want people to follow you on? I'm on YouTube as well. On YouTube. YouTube. Yes, I'm on live, YouTube as live well. With Linda live with Linda, Twitter, as well. live with Twitter. Linda. Yes. So uh, make sure you follow her. I'll check her link in the description. Um, and yes, guys, remember to like, remember to comment, remember to share, remember to subscribe. Hit the notifications bell. Am I forgetting anything? Else? <laughs> also, remember to share your thoughts on yeah. yes, yeah, what please. we discussed. Yes, Very important. Yeah. Below. Yeah. Feedback. Yeah. Comments below. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, guys, that's all we have to share with you today. If you like this video, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. And we'll see you guys on the next that's one. That's that YouTuber voice. Peace, Peace out. <laughs> <laughs>